Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how to defeat the two secret bosses in Chapter 1 and Chapter 2, Red Long and Black Long respectively. For those of you who don't know how to get them, I'll give you a quick guide. Basically, you have to have reached Chapter 2 and defeated the first boss, which is the second Prince of Flowing Sands. After he's defeated, you will be able to move to the next area, which is the Valley of Despair. From there, all you have to do is head right towards the cave. And depending who you have killed on the previous boss encounter, either the father or the prince, you may have the first prince here already automatically summoned for you. If not, you can manually do it. However, that is not required to unlock the secret bosses. Once he is defeated or if it's not there, you want to go to this door, which is just right under the platform. And you want to crack this door open. Now, there are a couple of ways to do it. What I did was smash it with my spirit, Wandering White. If you don't have this spirit, I highly suggest that you go to chapter one and get it. It is very useful. I also heard that people managed to get this door open during the fight with the first prince and kind of baiting the prince to charge you and you dodge so he ends up hitting the wall. I tried that, it didn't work for me. I don't know if just any regular heavy attack will crack this open. If anybody knows can confirm that, please let us know in the comment down below. Anyway, once the door is cracked open, just go in, you will find a chest at the very end and all you have to do is open that chest and you get the key item long scales. Once you have that, now you're able to unlock the first boss, which is located in the forest of wolves. This is in chapter one, outside the forest. And what you wanna do is go straight. You're gonna see the two enemies, defeat those enemies, run past them, all good. You wanna make a left. And once I make a left and you go a little bit further, you're gonna start hearing the waterfall. And from that point on, you can either go down from the left or go down from the right. Either way, if you follow the road, it will lead you to that waterfall. You'll be able to actually just see the waterfall at that point and you wanna go just towards it. And now once you get to the waterfall, you will be able to interact with it and it will stop and open up an area for you to walk in. This boss is actually pretty simple. It's not very difficult. The key mechanic that you have to know about this boss fight is that whenever he staggers and he falls down, you want to get behind him and start hitting those bells. I believe he has uh, three bells total or four bells that they light up and you want to destroy it. So once you destroy one, it will take away a big chunk of his health. And that is pretty much all you have to do. It's just every time you knock him down, immediately get behind his back and start hitting those bells. He has three of those. Once you destroy the last one, you just defeat the boss. So it is not very complicated once you know this mechanic. Uh, otherwise you spend a lot of time just wasted uh, doing little damage. And I'm going to let the full fight play out so you can get an idea how it works.
All right, now for the second boss, Black Long, he is located on chapter two in Rock Rest Flat. So you have to have reached this area, of course. Once you reach this area to your right, you're going to see a platform with an enemy standing there that shoots stuff at you. And then you are going to see stairs that lead to a kind of like a waterfall, a sandfall, I guess you would call it. Kind of like a waterfall, but instead of water, it's sand dropping. So you want to go there. There's going to be enemies on the way. There's going to be one of those glowing blue enemies that if you defeat, it will give you a spirit. And after you have cleared the area, you can also interact with this sandfall, just like you did with the waterfall. It will now open up the door that you go in and you are met with a second secret boss. Now, this enemy is not particularly difficult, but he does one thing that kind of throws me off completely. And I've died so many times for this because I just couldn't get the rhythm right. He does this twice close towards the middle of his health bar and again close towards the end of his health bar where he's going to slam the ground and there's the ripple that does AOE damage and after doing many unsuccessful tries the best way that worked for me was to jump dodge and then wait for the final hit which there is a couple of seconds of delay which does a massive damage and do another jump again that has been the strategy that kind of ended up working for me to defeat this dragon. Uh, by the way, and in terms of uh, spells or things like that, I didn't have anything special really. All I had was the Wandering White as the spirit just because of that 30 points in defense. And again, with all the bosses, one thing that I always do is always charge my smash attack at the very beginning uh, just to get that free damage. So I do that pretty much whenever I can with all the bosses. I'm gonna let again the whole gameplay go through so you can see how it works. Uh, the two fights are definitely not award winning or even pretty, but they got the job done, so hopefully it helps you out. So there you have it, those are the two kind of secret enemies where you actually have to go out of your way to kind of find them. These two enemies are part of a total of four dragons. The other two showing up in chapter three and chapter four. The chapter three one is very easy, just as a bonus. Once you arrive on chapter three and you are on Turtle Island, 
right from where the shrine is, all you have to do is go right downhill and you're going to see the dragon sitting there. The first time you encounter him, he's just going to be a statue. Once you get there, then he turns into a dragon and you can fight that one. That particular dragon, nothing special really. It is one of those that you have to be patient and not just kind of go in and try to overwhelm the dragon. The other tip that I have for the third dragon, which is stay away from the edges. I think the area of fight, the arena of fight is a little bit smaller than other places and there's a rock on the edge of it. Uh, stay away from that because you're gonna get stuck and you're gonna get like just take a hit after another hit. All right, anyway, so that is it. That is all I have for you guys. Uh, the fourth dragon, I haven't reached there yet. Once I do, I'll make a video probably. Good luck in your playthrough. Other than that, enjoy the game, have fun, and I'll see you all in the next video.